effect on South Africa. But what's encouraging is that that effect uh, is muted. So we are seeing a bit of risk aversion in our markets, investors taking a cautious approach to the debt capital market transactions. But what's nice is that deals are still being done. People are still, or issuers are still able to raise capital in this market. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit more expensive than what we saw in the first half of 2011. Right. Um, I think it was unreasonable to think that our market could continue on that tra trajectory that it was on, right. um, where prices were coming down. Um, with what's going on in Europe, uh, the European sovereign crisis, the banking crisis, there is a bit of nervousness in our market. One would ask the question, why is there nervousness? particularly given the fact that we don't even have half the problems that they have in Europe. And really, across the whole African continent, uh, the risk hasn't been there that we're seeing in Europe, the risk of bankruptcy, bankruptcy I mean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I think with the economy, economies being so global now, we're not completely shielded from what's going on in the world. We saw uh, yesterday that Moody's put uh, South Africa's um, outlook on negative watch. So there is some effect in, in South Africa. Sure. What is important, though, is that our issuers' balance sheets are still healthy sure. and they're still able to, to support the debt that they raise in this market. So who is raising capital in this market? You spoke about the fact that uh, the state-owned enterprises have not been as enthusiastic as they were last year in terms of raising money or at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I think um, the, the large infrastructure state-owned entities, they did a lot of their capital raisings last year uh, with the, the significant spend that they had in the run-up to the World Cup. Their spending has since come down, so this, uh, the raising has come down in line with that. Mm -hmm. um, but they re remain issuers in this market. Sure. Uh, our big banks are, are major issuers in the markets as well. Okay. They raise a significant amount of capital. And then we have corporate issuers uh, that come to market for funding. Mm. So how expensive has it become, talking in terms of spreads here? The, the credit spreads are starting to, uh, starting to widen, but it's about 5 to 10 basis points mm. depending mm. on the sector and the issuer. Yeah, and historically, how, how does that compare? Well, you've got to take it into context. With so much demand in 2010, we actually saw spreads decreasing by as much as 30 basis points in certain instances. And we saw the levels come back down to the pre-2008 crisis levels. Mm -hmm. So spread widening of about 5 to 10 ba basis points is, is, is not that much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So the overall picture that you raise is that things are not too bad, but there is some risk in, that in, in the market at the moment. But one of the issues that was raised in the panel discussion that you participated and was around regulation, particularly mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. new Companies uh, Act. What kind of an impact is that having on the market? Well, I think this year in, t in the debt capital markets, we had a number of new regulation coming in into play. The new JSE listing requirements, which came into effect in June, and then the new Companies Act, which also came into effect around the, the same time. Yeah. Now, uh, we all understand the, the importance of the regulation and how it increases transparency and just ensures that there's good govern, governance principles in the market. Sure. So we all understand why it's there. Yeah. I think in, what has happened though is, um, and, and in my view, I think there's been a bit of an unintended consequence in the Companies Act, for example, where sure. um, private companies going forward will be deemed as public if they are issuing bonds in the market in terms of the provisions of the Companies Act. Mm -hmm. And that has scared some of our private company issuers or multinational issuers who would prefer to remain uh, private companies in South Africa. Yeah, and one of the issues that I remember hearing in the morning was the issue around the fact that with this regulation, what it means is it's, it's making things more expensive for uh, both uh, the, for, 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 for the funders. I think more than expensive, it just means more work mm -hmm. when, you, when you're intending to go to market. I think there's more uh, dialogue with the regulators, there's more work that needs to be done. Right. Um, Expense-wise, I think that's still manageable and, and still marginal. Um, it's more uh, the turnaround times and the, the work involved. Would there be easy solutions to the kind of issues that you're raising? I think in time, it, as there's um, more dialogue between issuers, the banks, <coughs> uh, lawyers, and the regulators, yeah. I think we will find a common ground that makes practical sense. Do you get the sense, though, that there is that willingness on the part of the regulators to talk to the, the, to the market? I think so. I think the regulators are, are uh, engaging with the market participants. We have various in industry b bodies and forums that are starting to talk to each other mm -hmm. and uh, trying to find a common ground.